We've been getting a lot of questions recently regarding Olympic style lifting to increase pitching speed or batting power or just in general for our baseball players. While this is a good question, we got a few things to think about that we're gonna cover in this video, so stay tuned. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Max Wardell, OverheadAthletics.com. Today we're talking about Olympic style lifting in the context of training our baseball players for increasing their velocity. And when we think about any sort of training tool, we wanna think about the cost and the reward or the pros and cons of the exercise. What is the risk, what is the benefit here? And when we think about these sorts of things, these sorts of exercises, we wanna think why these exercises were developed. Well, it's a pretty cool feat of strength and power to be able to lift something from the floor right over your head. Awesome. It's also something that we inherently like to uh, experiment with from an athletic pursuit. What's cooler than how much weight I can deadlift off the floor in power lifting or how much I can squat or how about dynamic and fast? How fast can I lift an object from the floor and get it into a powerful position over my head? It's a, it's a very old form of training, meaning that we've used these, these uh, training tools and, and these exercises for competition's sake for hundreds of years. When we think about training baseball, we're thinking about specific demands that are required to throw the ball as fast as possible. Those specific demands are exactly that, specific and individual to the context that we want to apply them for. And what we mean here is the pitching motion is very complex. It's a very powerful movement, but it requires fine motor skill in combination with proper sequencing so that I can be as fast as powerful, but also throw the ball to the intended direction. And with this movement being complicated and complex, meaning certain things have to happen in certain ways, and there's so many things occurring, it's sometimes difficult for us to choose an exercise that's really a sport, and that's, that's what Olympic lifting is. It's a sport, more so than a training activity. And we're gonna take that and apply that to our pitchers. Well, a few things to think about when we think about Olympic lifting. The average Olympic lifter trains for years and years, 10, 12 years, before they get to a very proficient level in terms of technique. It's a very technical skill, just like pitching. And whenever you have a technical skill, it, there's a long learning curve, meaning you have to learn the technique over the course of a long period of time to get proficient at it so that you're technically proficient and not at an increased risk of injury. And then once you get to that, you can start to load up and then increase your power and speed. So there's a long learning curve. Whenever there's an exercise with a long learning curve, there's pros and cons to it, meaning maybe for the first two to three years of me doing a snatch or a clean or clean and jerk, maybe for the first two to three years, I'm not really getting any sort of muscular overload, any sort of quantitative overload. I'm, I'm increasing my weight as my nervous system adapts to the load. So I'm not really getting a ton more powerful in the beginning if I'm doing it properly. Now, if you grab the barbell and in two months you're increasing and just completely loading up the barbell, I would say, yeah, you're probably increasing your power a little bit, but there's no way you've maximized your technique. And if you haven't maximized your technique, you are at an increased risk of injury regardless of what people will say. And this is something I covered, or I'm covering in my book that I'm writing, which is injury rates in different sports. And so you can look at injury rates in elite level sport and then try to compare that to the amateur levels or the very low level that our baseball players are gonna come in with as far as technical proficiency in the Olympic lifting. And what you see is that the less technical proficiency you have, the injury rates go up. In addition to that, the highest level guys get injured at about the same rate as other sports. Okay, great. However, in my mind, you should never get injured in the training setting. So anything that exposes you to added risk in the training session is really not worth it. And we know that most athletes don't have the requisite ankle flexibility to be dropped into a deep squat. They don't have the adequate wrist extension to catch a rack position, catch that front rack position. They don't have sometimes enough thoracic extension to get overhead and you could say, well, we're gonna increase those things. Great, that's fine. But Maybe our time is better spent elsewhere. And what I mean by that is if I'm spending a lot of time developing the skills and ranges of motion necessary to Olympic lift, but those aren't the same skills and ranges of motion necessary to throw the ball as fast as possible, maybe I could be better spending my time on something else. And let's not ignore the fact that there are numerous exercises that can train power and speed that are probably even a little bit better for pitching. Power, 
despite what some people may tell you, power is context specific. That's a neurological phenomenon. It's been proven time and time again in the scientific literature. And I can illustrate it in this way. When you pick up a new skill, you may only be able to express 50 to 60% of the power that you innately have from your muscular system. Why? It's a protective mechanism because your body has never done it before. Your body says, whoa, 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 we're not going to put a full, full amount of force, even 90% force into this or, or effort into this because we don't want to get injured. And we've never done this. It's risky for us. Once we train, our body goes, oh, we're more proficient in this. We're not going to get injured. We can put a little bit more of our reserve into it. We, we can take the governor off a little bit. Then I can lift heavier and heavier weights. But if I take that same exact concept and I go to another lift, that doesn't mean just because I power cleaned more that I'm going to squat more. Now, I might squat more if my legs actually got stronger. Power is context specific as far as the neurological reserves. Anytime I go into a new skill, I'm not gonna be operating at my fullest potential because my nervous system hasn't gotten to that point. So when we think about Olympic lifting, my general perspective is if you're really proficient and you've taken years training it, and maybe if I had a five-year-old and I started training them at five or six, I might start with those exercises. Maybe I'll start with that with my children. However, if I'm getting coming into a college strength and conditioning room or I got a you know, high school senior, I'm probably not going to elect those lifts because it's going to take them three to five years to become really technically proficient at those lifts. Really technically proficient. And by the time they get to that, I could have developed them another six, seven miles an hour potentially by giving them lifts that they could be proficient at in a month. On top of that, I really don't know that they're the most specific lifts to, to pitching. From a general conditioning standpoint, great. You know, and that's maybe why I might use them with my kids. From, from the perspective of pitching and pitching development, I just don't know how they transfer to the mound. They're not specific. They're not. You don't go through a triple extension movement. That's not what happens. You go through hip abduction from internal rotation to external rotation to internal rotation again while you then go into a, a plantar flexion movement while the knee goes through tibial internal rotation on the femur to tibial external rotation on the foul. There's so many things happening. On the front leg, I land and I have to resist rotational force of hip adduction and internal rotation, which never happens in Olympic lifting. While the leg straightens, while the femur is rotating out on a fixed tibia, there's so many things happening, I just don't think it's specific enough, and maybe we can talk about the biomechanics in another video, but I don't think you're gonna get your maximum benefit from those, and I do think they, they carry some injury risk. Are there better alternatives? There are, and if you stick with our channel, I'll show you some of those in a future video. Hit the thumbs up if you like this video. Any questions, drop them in the comments section. I'm sure we're gonna get some, some good dialogue on this one, but we will see you guys in the next video.